In the next half an hour, a special report on a groundbreaking operation that could change the life of one Northeast boy and hundreds more across the country. I can't put my socks on, pull my trousers up, tie my laces, and I find it hard to walk up the stairs. But why is it only on offer thousands of miles away? The UK is not a third world country. We shouldn't be offering a third world level of care. And Sunderland actress Melanie Hill wonders if the city is neglecting its footballing heritage. Will a street name actually be enough to remind us of the excitement and the passion of the thousands of fans that crowded onto the terraces that once stood here? Stories from the heart of the northeastern Cumbria. This is Inside Out. Five months ago, the future for 10-year-old Mitchell from Teesside looked painful. His parents thought they'd exhausted all possibilities of treating his cerebral palsy. But then they heard about an operation performed in the States that could transform his life. But there's a risk. This is Mitchell's story. Every day, 10-year-old Mitchell has a mountain to climb. The simplest tasks require a monumental effort. Hi, Chris. Hi, Phil. How are you doing? Yeah, very well. How's it going? Good to see you. Everybody in? I can't put my socks on, pull my trousers up, tie my laces, and I find it hard to walk up the stairs. But going down the stairs is easier because I generally go down on my bum. Mitchell has cerebral palsy. Brain damage before he was born means his nerve signals are disrupted and are telling his leg muscles to tense up. As a result, he walks on tiptoe with bent knees. For Mum Deborah and Dad Phil, a cameraman who works for the BBC, the signs were there when he was a baby. He couldn't sit up properly um, and his legs were very tight. Um, we put him in the bath and instead of sort of as babies normally lean forwards, he was leaning right backwards. He just couldn't get his hips at the right angle. Cerebral palsy can affect muscles in various parts of the body. There is no cure. We've told so many different things. You, 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 in the end, you wonder who to believe. Um, when doctors say, "Oh, we, you know, we're, we're going to try him on this," we, we're not sure, but we think it'll be of some help to him. And you think, "Right, great, brilliant, we'll try that." And then you realise after a while that you no, know, they're not making any difference at all. This one for about ten. Four. In prospect for Mitchell is a gradual tightening of his muscles and decreasing mobility. The thought of him being in a wheelchair and, and not being able to get around himself and having to rely on other people, they were bad days. I think the worst fear was that we were going to have to watch him struggle and there was nothing... I don't know if I could do it. But there is a ray of hope. It's an operation called Selective Dorsal Rhizotomy, or SDR, and it's on offer at the St. Louis Children's Hospital in Missouri. Selective Dorsal Rhizotomy has been practiced in the US for more than two decades. It's been described as miraculous because for some patients it has transformed their walking. So, how does it actually work? A one-inch section of surface bone is removed from the spine. The exposed nerves, which are sending the mixed messages to the leg muscles, are cut. With fewer signals getting through, the muscles relax, and walking should become easier. 
A different version of SDR is performed in Britain, but only on one or two very young children a year. At St Louis, they do it three times a day, remove less bone and can do it on much older children. But it costs more than £40,000. So for months, they've been furiously raising funds to get Mitchell to America. Target is in sight. Have you actually been to America before, Dad? No, I've not? never been. It's our first trip, so really looking forward to that. Oh, here we go. What's that? Looks like we've got a. Oh, you nearly wow. threw that away. Is that a check? Yeah, check. Two thousand five hundred oh. pounds. Fantastic. That's, That's incredible. I mean, that's just two and a half grand just arrived through your letterbox. Yes. Mm. Does that amaze you, though, that people can can just be so generous? Oh, it's never stopped amazing us, has it? Does it? Yeah. No, Just absolutely people. incredible. I mean, even from the, the smallest donations, like the little boy who knocked on the door with his £5 pocket money, it meant as much to us, yeah, really, as, as some of the big ones do, yeah. It's October. The family have raised enough money to get Mitchell to St Louis, and he's been provisionally accepted as a patient. They've arranged to meet a family in Daventry, whose daughter had the operation four months ago. Hours, but what apprehensions did you have before the operation? You know, I felt like we were playing with quite a big risk here. Mm -hmm. You know, there is the chance that something could go wrong. Mm -hmm. However, 100% success rate, you mm -hmm. can't really ask for much more than that, can you? Oh, absolutely. And that's what swung it for us. This is how Holly walked before the operation. <laughs> Holly can now walk completely flat-footed. She comes down the stairs independently on her feet rather than on her bottom. She runs. Oh, my fault. Definitely the best thing we ever did, and if we needed to do it again, we would. I mean, she's so much more confident in herself. So, Holly's operation was a huge success. But what do mum and dad make of the British attitude to the American surgery? What do the British doctors know about the American operation? Very little to nothing, I'd say. Are you surprised uh, at that? Yeah. Yeah. Frustrated, yeah. I think, that it's not talked about, rather than surprised. Um, yeah, the fact that you're just not given the options and you're not given the full story and the full choices. These complaints are common among families here who are considering SDR. It's surprising, given how effective the operation appears to be. What can you do now that you couldn't do before the operation that you had? Come on, show me them. Can't you put it like your eyes You couldn't do that before. You wobble. And you can jump. Yeah, I'm here. Ow. For Phil, Deborah and Mitchell, the visit has dispelled any doubts they may have had. You would never think that there was anything that she'd ever been, you know, had any troubles, any problems with the mobility or anything. It's it's fantastic. It's late October. The family are now in St. Louis. They have three days before Mitchell's operation. What happens when it rocks? Oh, 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 oh. Look, no, I'm not gonna die. <laughs> it's a welcome diversion for what's in store. Hi, we're in the zoo. 